welcome to Monsters and Makers. My name is Chris Wyatt, and I am an Aries. Hi, welcome. My name is Andrea Hayes, and I am a Libra. Hi, my name is John Hurst. I'm a haunter here in the Pacific Northwest, and I'm a Gemini. No, I'm a Gemini. No, I'm a Gemini. Well, you may uh, know our guest by another name, Krampus. A lot of you probably have seen him at Crypticon and other uh, cons like that. Um, he is what I call the Seattle Krampus. So, John, would you like to tell the audience who may not know about Krampus the legend of and how it came to be? There, there's belief that Krampus came from uh, Nordic heritage originally and then came down into the uh, Germanic and Bavarian, Bavarian areas. Um, where it kind of held on to its its origins and uh, it became kind of a after harvest time during the shortest days of the year you know the families would come together by candlelight and tell ghost stories and so they would get together and tell kids you know you better be good um, or in December Krampus is going to come and um, that turned into these groups of men that would uh, carve these wood masks or leather masks and they would actually come together as groups and they would walk from farm to farm and they would come knock on the doors they would have bells on their belts and so the kids would hear them coming and the family would hear them coming and when they would knock on the door uh, the family would come and there would usually be a piece of paper slipped to somebody or uh, somebody would whisper in one of the Krampus's ears and they would know which child may not have been the best one out of the bunch and, and um, so the Krampuses would kind of come in and they would end up chasing the kids around the kitchen and uh, trying to pin them against the wall behind the kitchen table or something without ever actually touching them and pretending to try to swat them, things like that. And, um, and it was kind of the reverse of what we have here in America with Santa Claus. And I hear a lot of people say he's the anti-Santa Claus and Santa Claus really isn't any part of the culture over there. Above your, your right shoulder is the one you're most known for wearing. Are you able to, is it is it attached? Can you show us? or tell us about it? Well, let's see, four of the masks of the people in the Krampus Seattle group are carved in Austria. Or excuse me, three of them are carved in Austria. My son's mask was carved in Germany. See Krampus uh, with a big basket on his back? Yep. What is that about? Part of the folklore where uh, Krampus uh, will come and take the, the worst of the, the naughty kids and throw them in his bag and uh, take them off into the darkness. and. Um, a lot of times you'll see them carrying a, a bundle of birch branches. Um, those are for swatting the kids or threatening the kids, or um, it's uh, just something, something to sh you know, show the kids that you mean business. So your role uh, as Seattle's Krampus, uh, what kind of activities or events have you participated in? So, um, so I've been a haunter for quite a few years, and um, I've also done security in a lot of different aspects of haunting. And one year I thought, well, what would I do that this particular haunt that I was at um, hadn't had yet? And so I decided to uh, start building a Krampus costume one year. And that turned into a two year ordeal because I didn't realize how long it was going to take. It's probably 50 to 60 pounds of fur and leather uh, and bells and, you know, the belt and all that. So uh, I know since the Krampus program got canceled this year, some of you went to Leavenworth. So it was a spur of the moment thing. Uh, I got together with uh, two other members of the Krampus Seattle group, uh, Peter Pawlicki and uh, Josh Simon, and uh, said, hey, why don't we just, you know, since we don't have to haunt this year, why don't we go do something fun and not tell anybody about it? We'll just show up in Leavenworth and see what happens. And uh, we walked down that road and people were honking and rolled down their window and taking pictures. So we came in behind the police and kind of snuck up behind them and were like, Psh, and uh, said, hey, can we get a photo with you? And they, they were pretty cool. Have you started to make any plans for uh, next next holiday season, assuming the, you know, the plague is done by then? Yes, absolutely. We are planning something for next year. Next time around, we're trying to include a larger core group of Krampus and um, other creatures from, from that folklore. Um, we've got some interested parties that are the people that we've haunted with. And um, I've also been contacted by a lot of people that saw that Leavenworth post that want to be included. So they're already starting to work on costumes. And um, we're thrilled because the more people that come out and do that, the better. So I, I do know I have worked with your son and you are training him to be a Krampus. Would you like to tell us all about your offspring? 
Sure. So my son is uh, 14 years old. He'll be 15 in February. And he's been haunting at a different haunt than the one you mentioned. Um, I see your son's mask behind you. This one was carved in Germany. Um, the artist's name was Florian Brower. And I, I think his Facebook page is Florian Brower Lovenschnitzer. Let's just talk horror. Uh, what are some of your favorite horror movies? I watched all the campiest, uh, lamest horror movies that there were. I, I'm having a hard time thinking of a favorite. One question though, are there any films uh, either from your youth or, or adulthood, I guess it doesn't really matter, that's like legitimately uh, scared you? Yeah, probably like uh, a couple of the scenes in The Exorcist. Do you have a website or a uh, place where we can check out all your creative work? The Krampus Seattle Instagram. We have a Krampus Seattle Facebook group. We have a Krampus Seattle Facebook page. Uh, I have a Krampus Seattle Snapchat. And I'm pretty active on TikTok. Is there an official Krampus drink? You know, I, I, in our group of Krampus, in the Krampus Seattle group, I am the only person who doesn't drink. Um, however, uh, we are trying to collaborate with a, a, a Chuckanut Bay distillery here in Washington. They're up uh, Chuckanut Bay, Bellingham area, and they make a, a Krampus liquor. It's 100 and something proof. And uh, I may have tried like a Thimbleful just uh, at the Leavenworth trip, and uh, it was pretty spicy. Um, I would call that maybe our official one. I, I don't know. <laughs> our guest today has been John Hurst, also known as the Seattle Krampus. Is there anybody you want to give a shout out to or promote today? Some of our, uh, we, have, we have a few kind of rogue uh, Krampuses in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, one of my favorite ones is Ryan Fudge. He's known as Krampus253. He's based out of Tacoma. Another person I'd like to give a shout out to is Al Reidenauer. Uh, he's an author and a Krampus enthusiast in um, Los Angeles area. He is one of the founders of, of um, Krampus Los Angeles. And he wrote a book that's in English and uh, it's called The Krampus and the Old Dark Christmas, Roots and Rebirth of the Folklore, Folklore Devil. I got this book early on in my kind of, uh, while I was waiting for costume parts to arrive and things like that started reading it, I was like, oh my goodness, I had no clue that there was so much to this folklore and that somebody that speaks English could pack it into a, a book and then underprice it um, on, on all the usual places where you buy books. Also, the, the author that wrote the book um, that I just mentioned, he, uh, he has a podcast called Bone and Sickle, uh, which is very much about um, different cultures um, folklore, their their monsters, um, and uh, he he's got quite a few episodes. I don't know how many episodes he's up to, but it's uh, one of the only ones I've been listening to regularly. So, Cascadia Dread fans, um, we are going to give away a copy of Krampus, the Old Dark Christmas, and all you have to do is like this video and leave a comment, and we'll we'll choose a winner and get you that book. So I'll let Chris take us out. Thanks, John. All right. Well, that concludes today's Monsters and Makers. Thanks so much to uh, John Hurst for joining us. Uh, Seattle's Krampus. Be sure to take a look at all of his uh, websites and social media pages. Make sure you like this video and subscribe, subscribe to our channel and tune in soon for more content. And enter the contest. And enter the contest. Yes, no, absolutely. No cost you nothing. <laughs> Leave a comment right here. Tell us what you think of Krampus.